Well, everybody, we just did it. We made our first supply run to Fairbanks. It's been a pretty good day so far. We're running on about four hours of sleep. I think we left it like before five this morning, and I think it's like seven o'clock in the afternoon right now. We're starting to head towards home, and it's beautiful out here. I'm in a t-shirt, it's 45 degrees. We have everything on the trailer and in the back of the truck, we think, to revamp or repurpose our shed into a chicken coop. We're heading home, we're gonna get started on this build. back with our supplies and we are ready to get started on this chicken coop. If you followed us for any of our building projects in the past, you may know that we are slightly inexperienced and we don't always get everything we need the first round at the hardware store. So sadly, probably like two hours into our drive home, we realized that we forgot some stuff, which is absolutely horrible because the hardware store is hours away. We still have plenty to get started though. So the first thing we have to do is get some demolition done. We have to take apart some of the stuff that's actually in the shed right now, since it's going to be converted into a chicken coop. We've got this glorious day, but I think that we have some bad weather headed our way. So we're gonna try and get as much done as we can today. <laughs> Okay, what we're doing here is the shed used to have, which we just took out, a little insulated generator room, which we are not gonna be using. So I'm gonna pull this huge piece of, uh, I don't know if this is called an extension cord or just wiring, but we're gonna pull this out. This thing's awesome, it's super thick, so I'm sure we'll be able to use this in the future. And that whole little area we kinda took apart in there, we have plans for that. So that's gonna be kind of like a little separate room in the chicken coop that's, that we're gonna keep a few things. But see if we can get this cord all the way out, it's probably, yeah, good 60 feet. 10 AWG. Look at all this melting. So much melting. Dang it, I missed one. right along to the floor and I hope we get it done pretty quickly. Chickens are clearly not very happy. They have nowhere to lay in there. We've got to take that plastic out that we just recently put down. That was an effort to kind of keep the floor clean since we knew we weren't going to get to this right away. We also were just trying to protect them a little bit from drafts because there's those gaps in the uh, planks on the flooring. We definitely want to insulate the floor. We just can't do that right now. We only have a certain amount of space. So we're gonna get some OSB down and then we have some flooring for the chicken coop.
Everything smells neat. It looks really good around here, huh? Okay. Spring is here. We got the compressor out and our siding nailer. We're gonna be using this to nail down that OSB to the floor in there. And I think we got four sheets in there. That's all that would fit just as full pieces. We're gonna get those secured and that way we can get some accurate measurements and we'll continue on the floor. going on here it is time to get the flooring down and we listened to you from last time and we are going with sheet vinyl flooring pretty exciting stuff This is so cool. This is like really nostalgic or something to me. Uh, we both wanted this patterning when we went in and saw it. It is marble paver, black and white, looks like tiles, obviously they're not real, and it's vinyl. I was under the impression this was linoleum, but it is a vinyl sheet and it is going to make things in here absolutely amazing. There's a couple different methods that we've researched on laying this sheet vinyl floor. You can do something called a loose lay method, which is basically just loosely putting it down almost like a big rug and it pretty much stays there. And then there's a method that you could do where you use adhesive and that's what we're doing. We're using a floor adhesive and we're just going around the edges of the whole uh, sheet flooring. And we're putting some of this down, almost done for the day. We're back out here working on 
on the chicken coop. Yeah, we got a lot done the other day. We were kind of in a rush because we had that bad weather came coming in and it came for sure. We got a few inches of snow. I'm hoping it's the last time that it's gonna snow. We're in like the end of April now and it's snowing. Yes, so we were inside <laughs> pretty much for two days, which was all right. We were kind of brainstorming the coop and learning new things that we were gonna do today. And what is on the agenda for today? Today's a big day. We're gonna be putting in the windows, which is huge for the chickens. They're living in the dark. Um, we've got we've got a lot to do, so we've gotta to get to work, right? Yep, we were getting some snow cleared. We're gonna go grab our scaffolding and we're gonna cut some windows. Let's do it. <laughs> Our first window we're gonna get started on today is kind of the easier one. So it's on a non-load bearing wall. It's lower down and it's the smallest of the windows we're gonna be putting in. And we did buy some lumber for this project, unfortunately, and lumber is pretty expensive. The sawmill is kind of out of commission right now. It's in pieces over by the Connex and we just have way too much snow on the ground to mill any lumber. And we also don't have any down trees right now to mill into lumber. So we got some wood, we got two by sixes, two by fours, and a couple of two by eights. Okay, fiberglass insulation, it is a nasty product to work with. So this was old insulation that was just in, oh, I can't breathe, just in one wall. We probably would have left it in if we weren't gonna put a window here, but we're gonna put a window right here and this is gonna be like a ventilation window, one that will open and close as needed. And since we need to take the insulation out to get the window cut in and framed in, we're just gonna toss this old insulation. I don't know what R value it is, but we bought brand new R21 for the walls. So that's what's gonna go in here. And I think our first step is we're gonna trace out the window on the outside of the siding. And we're gonna cut a hole in the shed. I'll put it right here. You got yours where you want it? Exactly there, yeah. Perfect right here. Inch, a little under inch and a half. We have not framed too many windows in our day, so I took the liberty of doing a bunch of research and we're gonna try and do these properly. Like Eric mentioned, this is a non-load bearing wall. Um, so it's just a little bit different than how you would do if you had a load bearing wall. And we're kind of doing this backwards. Obviously you could frame in a window when you're putting your wall up to begin with. So we've cut the space out and the construction of this shed is two by sixes, which is awesome. We also bought two by sixes for the project and we're gonna have what are called king studs running along the edge of the window. Those go from the top all the way down to the bottom plate. And then there's a jack stud, but the jack stud goes to the header and down to the bottom plate. And then we have what are called cripples, these in-between pieces. And then we have a header and a sill. Gotta do a bunch of measuring still and just see exactly how we're gonna get this window to fit in this spot. Here we go, we invested in a new tool and this is a framing nailer. This is the rigid 21 degree framing nailer. I've always bought just rigid stuff, so we're sticking with the rigid. And then for nails, first off, this is our first time using one of these, so I'm pretty excited. We got three inch by .131. I looked up that this was kind of like a good general framing nail gun, or nail, so this is what we're gonna use. We're gonna put two of these packs of nails in there. I think it's pretty easy to load. You put one. Oh no, hold on a second. Look at that. I put that one in. Yeah, you put that in like the wrong Upside way. down. Okay, so now I have to figure out. We do have a nail gun already. It's a DeWalt. We really like that one. That's a siding nail gun. So it shoots like a smaller nail 
this is like the big boy. So this is framing for like two by fours, two by sixes, framing walls and stuff. Ariel's got a king stud in there and a jack stud. We're gonna get those nailed in first. I think I'm gonna do something called toe nailing, which is nailing kind of in at an angle. And that's where this gun comes in handy because it's got like these little spikes on here and you can like dig into the two by four, or the two by six in this case, and you can fire a nail at an angle. Let's just give it a go. Let's see how it works. Whoa, heck I don't yeah. think it moved it, did it? I don't, I don't think it didn't move it. No, but see, it didn't go in all the way. The head's sticking out just a tiny bit. Okay, that was the wrong way. <laughs> <laughs> see, that's what it is at an angle. It's getting hard to do. So I need to dig that in further. See how that went in a lot further? If you dig it in. Yeah, that's probably what you need to do, honey. That's better. Oh, yeah. That's awesome. Look at that. Woo! This one should be easy. A little more solid than our chicken coop. There's a movie has. where they open up, like, the shutters, and they, like, pop out, and this is what this is right now. This is awesome. Okay. Well, instead of using these really small pieces, which happen to be exactly five and a half inches, which a two by six, which I have right here is five and a half inches. We're just gonna take those out and we're gonna flip this two by six up on end. We're gonna put two of them in there and that'll be our header. We'll cut an inch and a half out of these ones right here. I don't know what these are called. Are these called cripples also? Yes. These are, all, these are also called cripples. We'll cut an inch and a half out of those and then we'll lay another one just like this down and that's going to be the sill and then from that point this window is done we're going to grab that window and we're going to see if she fits I get these in the right way. Okay, I think we're just low on nails. Look at that! This thing is so solid, it's insane. Moment of truth! <laughs> okay. Does it fit? A little like side on both sides. We're doing some trim work. It was a little bit too tight of a fit. What happened was when we put the jack stud in, it wasn't, it was like overhanging a little bit past the plywood. And we had cut that like pretty much perfect with a little bit of give on each side of the window, but it's just like super snug in there. We don't want it that tight. I don't want anything to happen um, if the wood expands. So we're shaving this down and then we should have a little bit of give for that window. We're moving on to a couple more windows that we're putting on a load bearing wall. So a load bearing wall is what is holding the weight. In this case, it is the weight of the roof. So there's a lot more pressure on here and there's a few more things you need to do. And you can immediately tell when I cut through these uh, two by sixes, they kind of like the cut I just made disappeared. So the weight of the roof pushed down on here. And you can tell that this is a load bearing wall. We got one more to do, a couple top cuts. We'll pop this window out. This one we're pretty excited for because these are going to be some big windows. That's nice. 
attached window. Yeah, that's why we gotta put extra supports though on this one, huh? Because it's a, they're two big windows. <laughs> That's a really, uh... Really, really good listener, huh? Bo, sit. Right now. <laughs> there we go. Flying through these windows, we have one more to do. Eric is doing an awesome job. We got these windows from a friend who was going to use them on something and just didn't end up needing them. So it's awesome that we were able to repurpose them. They're in really good condition. It was probably a little confusing before what we were saying, but I, I have a good example now to show you. So this is the load bearing wall and we have multiple components to it. You've got your king stud, which is this piece that runs all the way. It just happens to be by another stud that was already here. You've got the jack stud, which is supporting the header and the header runs vertically. We have two of them sandwiched in there. That's on the load bearing wall. We also ended up doing that actually on this other wall over here, but that's something special that you would do on this wall. And then we have all these cripples down here. You could add an extra one to hold the sill up. I think we're going to do that, but we haven't cut it yet. It's gonna sandwich right here. And then we have the cripples up top, which are the two by sixes that were already present here. On this wall, if you were doing this one, I guess the way that you can do it is you don't actually have to have a jack stud here from what I've read, but they're usually pretty helpful to have. So you could admit this and just have your king stud directly against the window. And on the top, the header could actually just go like this. You can just have one two by four or one two by six like this. But we ended up doing that and it works perfectly. So obviously it's just gonna vary depending upon your circumstance and I'm I'm really happy with this. I think it feels really strong for the snow load that we have. We gotta get one more window done and we've gotta work fast because it's getting to be the end of the day. Okay. Okay, hit him. Ready? Yep. You can go my way a little or you don't have to if you don't want. Oh, thank yes. God. We are all done for the night. We wanted to get windows put in the chicken coop and we did that. So we're pretty stoked on that, but I think we're gonna end it there for the night. Wasn't supposed to snow today and it pretty much snowed on us all day, but tomorrow is supposed to be really nice, but it's gonna get clear tonight and it's gonna get really cold. So I think we'll run the little diesel heater for one last night in here for the chickens and give them one more warm night. Window, huh? That was almost as hard as hauling fish up a hill in Chitna. Good way to start off the morning. So we have realized with the warm temperatures we had about a week ago that we got a leaky roof, a real leaky roof. So I shoveled off the roof, 
in hopes to kind of let this thing uh, dry out a little faster. We're gonna insulate the whole entire coop and I don't want the water to come in and kind of get everything wet. And we got a nice day out today. It's supposed to get to 40 degrees and we're gonna be doing all different kinds of things on the coop. First thing we're starting with is blocking. This has open rafters. So blocking is gonna be sealing that off for us. 14 inches. Spot number three. 14 and a half inches. 13 inches. <laughs> Well, we were flying until we got to this side. A little more difficult. We're having to do it from the inside. We're getting it done. It's taking longer. We are on the last one. The last ones we're having to screw in because it's really tight. Next, we're gonna secure that. That is like two big barn doors that open. We're no longer gonna have those. So we're gonna frame that all in, nail it in, and then we're working on spray foam. That is so cool. Be nice if you can keep them right you can always just open them but you're gonna let too much of a draft in <laughs> like that. okay Gosh. you okay i'm just trying to boot scoot boogie it over Well, we are ready to spray some of this foam. We have three different kinds. We have the kind for round windows and trim, so it doesn't expand that much. And then we have the ones that go a little bit bigger, an inch up to three inches. Eric and I are doing something totally different for this coop. Back where we were previously at, we had like an open air style coop, so it let in a lot of air, good ventilation, but it had no insulation. And this coop, we want just really insulated. So this is the first step. We've got to go around and get the cracks. We got to go around and get the blocking that we just did and just make sure everything's great before we put down fiberglass insulation. Why don't you let me go? You want me to go get the small cans for you? I'll go down now.
yolk, but they, they didn't need it. <laughs> Three words, spray foam sucks. <laughs> spray foam removal is not fun. Uh, this is actually a nightmare. So I guess we created this. We've got to finish it. Okay, moving along this morning. That is gonna be the chicken door, the one that they can kind of come in and out of the run. We got that done, we got the foam trimmed. We're just touching up a couple spots. And I think next on our list is we're gonna to try to make a nesting box for the chickens. The chickens are not happy with us doing these modifications to the coop. They're like extremely mad at us. So <laughs> see if we can get it done. We're gonna be designing a nesting box that never has to be replaced and is strong. We were actually gonna take our old one with us out of the old chicken coop, but when we went to take it off the wall, the whole thing pretty much collapsed. So we're gonna change that today. And Ariel got kind of sick of me cutting through plywood and other material and not getting a straight line. So we invested in this really cool uh, guide and it's working pretty good for us so far. So this is it right here. And right now it's set up to cut uh, like this way on a four by eight sheet of plywood. So at four feet, but this one comes with the extenders that you can put in there and you can cut all the way up to eight feet long and it gives you a nice clean cut. And then we're also using like a small six and a half inch cordless uh, circular saw. And this is really nice because there's no cord holding you back and it's also really lightweight and this thing just zips right through. So we're gonna make two cuts on this. This is gonna be like the base of their little nesting boxes. We're gonna do two on top of each other. So this will be the second layer. This will be the first. It's going to be about 15 inches wide. And am I cutting or are you cutting? There we go. Should be 66 inches, right? 66. <laughs> egg nesting box and it is awesome it is huge we went with eight private little suites for the girls and we have about 20 hens in the past we've had a lot more I feel like eight's probably gonna work for them our chickens like to lay on eggs for a really long time so that's why we did so many and sometimes we let them go broody and actually hatch out babies and we made these ones a little bit different they can kind of hold a lot more straw without them kicking it out. And they're also, like I was saying, kind of like private. So they're dark and the wood goes the full distance. In the past, we've had our chickens kind of get mad at each other and they'll peck each other. So this was Eric's idea and I think it's awesome. They've got this little perch and then they can hop up. Um, I think it's gonna be really awesome. We sanded it, we've got to get it painted. And then of course we've got to get it into the coop. I think at this point we're calling it a chicken house because it's just such a massive building for them. This is gonna be the first phase of the chicken house. We have to stop here because we need to go get the rest of the supplies, some things that we forgot and then some other stuff we decided we're gonna be end up, we're going to be working on the roof a little bit. So we need some things for that. And we're gonna pick back up on phase two next time and we will see you then. Are you going to go for the left wall? Oh my gosh. I was happy. That's freaking cute. 